Good morning, afternoon, and evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Star Wars video. And the first thing you probably notice right away is Zach is not here. This is because Zach is feeling a little bit under the weather today, sadly. Uh, he was able to watch the episode, but, you know, we're trying to not get me sick as well. So he just watched it up in his room, but he did enjoy the episode. It was a good episode. And overall, I was, I was pleased with it. It was, it was nice to kind of, like last episode, we didn't do much with the Ahsoka storyline. Uh, and so we kind of started to get back to that. I guess I'll do, you know, spoiler warning right now for episode seven uh, or uh, of the Ahsoka TV show, season one. And based on the way it's going, we're going to be getting at least, an, uh, at least you know, a season, a few more seasons uh, with the way that they've dragged out portions of it. But it is what it is. So we start off with Ahsoka going to um, going to the planet. And I gotta say, or actually, you know what? I almost forgot. Um, before we get into that though, this video is sponsored. Do you find yourself not having razors with skin safe technology? Carter. Yeah? You have a razor? Yeah, here's this no name one. Oh, okay. That's where Manscaped can save the day. With Manscaped's exceptional selection of products, you can find every tool for the job, like the Lawnmower 4.0. Man, I don't know. It looks like the same lawnmower. <laughs> no, not that one. Hey, do you have another razor? Yeah, here you go. Get the Lawnmower 4.0 with its impressive skin safe technology, as well as the Beard Hedger, the Weed Whacker 2.0 for no ear and nose hair trimming, and so much more from Manscaped. I must say, after receiving this product from Manscaped, I have, I've been quite impressed with it, especially this Beard Hedger here. Me personally, this is my personal favorite, the you know, best razor I have used, and I just love the way that you can adjust the height really easily, but they have some excellent products. So what are you waiting for? Make sure to check out the description below, click on the link, and use promo code NHP on Manscaped for 20% off your order. Now, without further ado, back to the video. Yes, thank you to Manscaped for the sponsorship. And again, going into this video, so we start off by them heading to, I can't remember the name of the planet, but the planet that the entire plot is on right now. Um, and essentially, so... So Ahsoka finally gets there. These these whales come out of hyperspace. And so there's this kind of this big battle as when they get out of hyperspace, um, you know, they're going through. And uh, but the interesting thing as well is that they actually start off with, you know, they because they, they have that aspect. And then the other storyline they start off with is actually on Coruscant at the New Republic. And this is Hera in court as that asshole politician she was dealing with earlier is looking to court martial here. Which is actually when we get, I guess, our main surprise of the episode when C-3PO shows up. Oh! 3PO! Yep, C-3PO shows up and tells Mon Mothma and the New Republic court... Uh, with the with which is interesting because it looks like their supreme court is also like their top politicians which is kind of an interesting way to do it but i mean actually funny enough that's kind of similar to the way the empire did it which is, is kind of just a funny thing there but c3 view comes out and says that apparently that that princess leia or senator organa as leia organa sent that order for her to go out there it's like a bullshit order i think she did after it already happened but you know this is Hera just kind of working her way out of something i got a notification on my phone what the hell but yeah so there's essentially that side of it and that's just kind of near the start and then afterwards uh they get into so ahsoka is about to is ascending on this planet and you know the imperials they were ready as there is an imperial minefield Whoa! Oh, shit. Oh, they put mines! Oh, my God. Yep, minefield setup. Good plan. Was able to kind of, 
you know, at least get in their way. And that's pretty much what it did because they sent fighters after it. But they, uh, she actually went and hid in like the rings of the planet in the in the debris field. And it was something that worked for a while. However, it seems that Thrawn has kind of started to a, a, a ally himself with they're, they're not technically Night Sisters because they're not from Dathomir, but the, the, the I think they're called the Grandmothers, like Grand Space Mothers, not Grandmothers. Um, and so they essentially use their magic and they're able to find out where she is. And the actual the hyperspace ring, uh, the turbo lasers on it start barraging the area she's in, and she does manage to get out. Uh, they have a little bit of dialogue between uh, Ezra and Sabine as they're kind of in like these like turtle like speeder thingies that are going like very slow. And I gotta say, whoever's playing Sabine, whoever plays Ezra, they have excellent chemistry. And it's one of those things where it uh, it was kind of needed because Sabine has been, there have been times of the show where she's been a little bit frustrating. So having her have a good connection with Ezra and, you know, making such a good casting choice uh, in that regard was really important um, at making her a bit more of a likable character. Uh, we see a bit of Bale in this episode, and he is just excellent. And I just, like, every time he talks, I'm, I'm drawn to it, I'm intrigued. And he decides to take Ahsoka one-on-one, -on -one, because Ahsoka's gonna come out of hiding, come down, and have a duel against Galen. That's all well and dandy, and it seems like, I, th I think her name is Shin, uh, the, the girl apprentice. And so she goes after with these group of mercenaries that get killed or whatever. And the, it goes after, um, Ezra and Sabine. Uh, and then afterwards, I think they, uh, the Imperials or Thrawn sends out two gunships. They go try to get some stuff done. Doesn't really work out. They pull out. Uh, I gotta say having Ezra fight without a lightsaber and kind of make look, I think her name is Shil, Shin, I'm going to go with that. Uh, making her look a little silly with no lightsaber is fun. Uh, and I think they're really starting to hint that she's going to turn uh, kind of like Reva, except a more likable character than Reva, uh, to the light side by the end of this show or sometime in a season two. It's going to happen at some point. And with Balin, it's, you know, you can tell that he's that he's motivated and he's driven moving forward. But there, he's going to make some sort of fall, uh, fatal error, uh, which is going to, um, which is not going to go up go so well for him. As literally, he's in a battle with Ahsoka, um, gets a little bit of gunfire from oh, I can't remember that droid's name, uh, but it kind of kicks all the dust up. And in the midst of the chaos, Ahsoka steals his wolf, essentially treated like a horse in the show, and just fucks off, which is just kind of hilarious because he's just kind of standing there like. Ah, fuck. So, overall, I gotta say, I really like this episode. It was one of those things where we got to see Thrawn as, as an excellent general. Uh, and it's funny, because the, the, the Night Sister keeps questioning him. And literally, time and time again, he's showing why he is not just a normal lieutenant, why he is the Grand Admiral, why he actually won battles when the Imperials were constantly losing. And it's one of those things where they introduce that like at least in the canon they introduce that in the novel they show that in rebels and they show more of that here which especially for those who weren't didn't watch rebels seeing how thrawn doesn't take orders from others in that regard and that he when he knows what's best he gets it done and he doesn't listen to stupidity around him uh really hammer zone i have to imagine for those who didn't watch uh rebels and maybe don't know about thrawn how competent of a general he is and how fantastic he is like, even, like, for example, Thrawn uses the fact that Ahsoka was mentored by Anakin uh, to um, to her disadvantage, where he's like, you know, if we know anything about where she, where she came from, um, we'll know that she's unpredictable. And so it, it all goes back to kind of that, that famous saying from Rebels, from Thrawn, to defeat your enemy, you must know them. And Thrawn knows his enemy well, which is why I'm so, so excited with the way that this show is going. And it's one of those things where I'm excited to see what our next episode is. I think it will be our last episode uh, of this season. So we'll see exactly how they, they tie it back. But I'm assuming it's at the very end, it's going to be Thrawn coming back to the galaxy. Everyone says, fuck, camera goes off. Season two is where that starts, where we really start to see hair to the Empire. 
So overall, let me know what you guys thought of this episode in the comment section down below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to subscribe, subscribe to CFL Central if you're into football content. Got some good stuff over there. Some player interviews, weekly shit. Check it out. And I will see you guys next time. How did my father die? Like a panther.